It passed. It was law for the longest time. And it brought down these mass killings. We should do it again. We can close the loopholes in our background check system, including the Charleston loophole. That's one of the best tools we have right now to prevent gun violence. The Senate should immediately pass. Let me say it again. The United States Senate, I hope some are listening, should immediately pass the two House passed bills that close loopholes in the background check system. These are bills that receive votes of both Republicans and Democrats in the House. This is not and should not be a partisan issue. This is an American issue. It will save lives, American lives. And we have to act. We should also ban assault weapons in the process. I'll have much more to say as we learn more, but I wanted to be clear. Those poor folks who died left behind families that leaves a big hole in their hearts. And, and, they receive votes of both Republicans and Democrats in the House. This is not, it should not be a partisan issue. This is an American issue. It will save lives, American lives. And we have to act. We should also ban assault weapons in the process. I'll have much more to say as we learn more, but I wanted to be clear. Those poor folks who died left behind families that leaves a big hole in their hearts. And, and, we can save lives, increasing the background checks so that they're supposed to occur, and eliminating assault weapons and the size of magazines. We don't know all the detail yet on that. But I'll be talking to you more later today or in the next couple of days about what else we know. May God bless you all and uh, those families who are mourning today because of gun violence in Colorado and Georgia, all across the country. We have to act so there's not more of you. There's fewer of you as time goes on. Thank you so much. Will you introduce new gun legislation, Mr. President? President Biden there in the state dining room at the White House before departing the White House. For a pre-scheduled trip this afternoon. He talked about urging the House and the Senate to act on legislation, pieces of legislation he said that have already been passed by the House. He said uh, that... And as you just heard, that was President Joe Biden at the White House talking about the events that happened in Boulder, Colorado. Those 10 people shot and killed, including the responding officer, Officer Talley. Uh, we're being told that uh, no questions uh, were taken by the president, but he did say that he's going to call to action uh, his fellow legislators uh, from the Senate and the House and ask them to start uh, building on the legislation to ban assault weapons, start background checks, really a call to action uh, using this particular um, tragedy to uh, spur on some new legislation and get it passed this time uh, in a bipartisan manner. That's right. We're going to have much more on the shooting in Colorado and what to expect next coming up later at the News at Noon. But for now, we are being, talking about big news on the vaccine front. All adults are going to be eligible to receive a COVID-19 vaccine in Texas. This affects everyone. The Texas Department of State Health Services expects vaccine supplies to increase next week and providers in several parts of the state making some great strides in vaccinating people in the current priority groups. The state's expert vaccine allocation panel recommended opening vaccines to everyone who falls under the current FDA emergency youth authorizations and to protect as many Texans as possible. Now this comes as Texas is nearing 10 million doses administered. Health experts are worried, though, about yet another surge. As nearly half of the country is seeing a rise in cases. This is health officials say Oxford uh, AstraZeneca may actually have released outdated data from its vaccine trials. ABC's Rena Roy has more on that. Today, growing fear about a possible fourth surge, at least 21 states seeing a rise in cases. Health officials urging people not to travel. We are worried not just for what happens when you are on the airplane itself, but what happens when people travel. That is, they go out, they mix, they mix with people who are not vaccinated. Case in point, they say Miami, where spring breakers have been flocking in droves, partying past curfew, mostly maskless. Some states like New Jersey taking no chances 
now holding back on reopening plans. Governor Phil Murphy on CNN. And my guess is we won't be opening up further capacities for some, some time now. Officials racing to get more people vaccinated. 24 states making the vaccine available to residents 16 and older in the weeks leading up to the president's May 1st deadline. But now concerns about that fourth vaccine from Oxford AstraZeneca, which released data yesterday saying its vaccine is 79 percent effective against symptomatic COVID-19 and 100 percent effective against severe disease. The National Institutes of Health saying they're concerned AstraZeneca may have included outdated information from that trial, which may have provided an incomplete view of the efficacy data. AstraZeneca saying that data was cut off on February 17th, but they believe it's similar to more recent data from the past month, adding they'll release updated analysis in the next two days. Dr. Fauci telling ABC Americans shouldn't worry. We have to keep uh, essentially trying as hard as we can to get people to understand that there are safeguards in place. And over in Europe, Germany has now extended its lockdown past Easter, with the president saying they're essentially in a new pandemic because of COVID-19 variants. Health experts here saying we should take that as a warning sign and keep following safety precautions. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And back here at home, local health officials reporting 166 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the seven-day moving average is now 176 cases a day. He also reported the weekly positivity rate is down to 2.3%. The mayor says that is the lowest percentage since health officials began to track it last April. Right now, health officials reporting more than 416,000 people receiving their first dose of the vaccine and more than 232,000 people are fully vaccinated here in Bear County. The blood supply in San Antonio and our surrounding areas critically low. Mayor Ron Nuremberg actually stressed this issue in last night's daily briefing. Sarah Costa spoke with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center about the need there during a blood drive at, a, at Antonian College Preparatory High School this morning. This is two-year-old Amy, who was recently diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. She is in need of a lot of blood treatments and the reason behind the blood drive at the Antonian College Preparatory High School today. Amy is one of, of thousands right now, obviously, that, you know, it's very sad in our community of people that have cancer and need platelets, plasma, or whole blood. The drive coming in at a critical time. Francine Pina with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says the need for blood in our community is dire and is struggling every day to keep up with demand. They especially need type O blood. We're giving out a hundred more units on a daily basis than we're actually receiving. And the only solution for that is for us to be able to rely on our community support. And that's why blood drives just like today's at Antonian is so important. Christy Crawcraft with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says the reason for the shortage is because they haven't been able to schedule as many blood drives during the pandemic. We are having to find any way and every way to get our community to respond without going on to an appeal and really get our community to schedule an appointment, show up and be there. Today's drive goes until 2 p.m. Appointments are required, but there are still some spaces available. All you have to do is call this number 210-731-5590. From Antonian, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. New this noon, CPS Energy has filed lawsuits against many of its natural gas suppliers, challenging the exorbitant natural gas charges during the February winter storm. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says that the lawsuits are designed to ensure San Antonio residents get fair treatment instead of price gouging. You can read more on the lawsuits right now on KSAT.com. What appears to be one of the hottest trends among thieves has a man in hot water. He has been arrested in connection with the theft of thousands of dollars worth of car parts, catalytic converters to be exact. As Katrina, Katrina Weber reports, this type of crime has left a lot of people making expensive repairs. It may not be worth a thousand words, but this picture represents thousands of dollars in losses to one business, according to San Antonio police. They arrested 36-year-old Roland Ramirez yesterday in connection with a couple of thefts at South Point Automotive in December. The arrest affidavit says Ramirez snuck onto the car lot twice, then went to work underneath vehicles. 
It says he stole catalytic converters and caused damage to the tune of more than $18,000. The affidavit says during that first theft, Ramirez was able to spend about two hours on this lot without being caught. It says he cut the catalytic converters off of eight cars and then got away. The second time around, police showed up and caught him. They say he also was caught on camera and they found evidence of him selling one of the valuable car parts to a metal recycler. The reason they're so expensive is because there's uh, precious metals that are inside of them, such as platinum and stuff like that. Steve so, uh, Acosta spoke to us in January off. after a similar rash of crimes in Universal uh, City. They backed up the truck, cut the locks, loaded it up. They were gone within 10 minutes. His car business was uh, hit too. Although this um, crime has so not been linked to Ramirez, these thefts are trending. Kerrville, Alamo Heights, and Windcrest police all have had reports recently too. But with Ramirez's arrest, SAPD is closing its catalytic converter case. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And do you recognize this person? Police are asking for your help with their investigation into a recent robbery on the north side. It happened Wednesday around 8.15 in the morning. The suspect entered a target in the 13,700 block of 281 North. He attempted to leave the store without paying, and when confronted, he threatened the employee with a gun. He then got away. Crime Stop is also asking for your help in solving a robbery over by the medical center. That robbery happened on March 7th, around 1.30 in the morning at the Circle K in the 8108 Fredericksburg location. Police say that the suspect approached the star clerk and threatened them, demanded money from the register. The employee gave the suspect the money and then took off from the scene. If you have any information on either of these cases that could help police, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224. STOP. Well, diabetes is a problem around the world and especially here in South Texas. Metro Health data shows one in seven people in our community have diabetes. The problem is a lot of people who have it or have prediabetes don't even know and that could have terrible consequences down the line. Today is Diabetes Alert Day, a one day wake up call that focuses on the seriousness of diabetes and the importance of understanding your risk. I really don't want to be a you know, a, a needle insulin diabetic type of thing. Sid Bedner had no idea diabetes could be in his future until he took a test and it changed him forever. My lifestyle uh, has changed. I try to go and, you know, manage what I eat. Diabetes and prediabetes are serious issues, especially in our community. The eating habits uh, of people who live in South Texas uh, uh, foster weight gain. And of course, obesity brings out uh, diabetes. <clears throat> so this is a very bad combination of lifestyle not going in our favor and genes not going in our favor. And adults are not the only ones dealing with this dangerous disease. At the Texas Diabetes Institute, we have now more children with type two diabetes than we have with type one diabetes. And the underlying issue is always they're very, very much overweight. So the most important thing that you can do, particularly in children, and it's also true for adults, is to maintain your body weight. If anyone in your family has diabetes, that is a big warning sign. By the time you develop symptoms, then the disease is already, you know, quite uh, far along. Uh, so there is a test that you can take. You can go on to the CDC or the ADA website uh, that uh, you just answer uh, some eight simple questions and they will tell you whether you're very likely to have diabetes. Eating healthier, regularly exercising and taking these tests could help save your life. As for Sid, he is now retired and wants to spend as much time with his family as possible. And if you have any questions about the test or one links to take those tests. We have all that information. Just head to KSAT.com. All right, March Madness is underway and it is Upset Central. We are joined by Cindy Bourne of the Washington Post, breaking down some of the best games. Plus the latest on the border crisis. We're going to take a look at two of the detention facilities near El Paso and Donna, Texas. That's right, cameras got inside after the break.
Major developments at the crisis at the U.S. southern border. Facilities overflowing with a surge of migrants and many are children that are crammed inside housing pods and sleeping on the floors after making the dangerous journey from Central America. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert explains, while still refusing to let journalists inside, the Biden administration finally releasing images inside two detention facilities. That's near El Paso and Donna, Texas. It's an ABC News exclusive, a first look inside southern border facilities amid the overwhelming flood of migrants desperately trying to reach U.S. soil. So many are children making the dangerous journey alone with nothing more than a phone number of a relative in America and a hope of help. This is his grandfather's phone number. Inside tented outposts like this one near El Paso, a wave of asylum seekers sleeping on floors, huddled under foiled blankets. From teenage boys to infants, the detention centers are overcrowded, crammed beyond capacity. Only 250 people are meant to be held here at this facility in Donna, Texas. Now, there are nearly 4,000. It's no place for children. Many crammed in housing pods, one pod holding more than 400 boys. After a perilous expedition across Central America and Mexico, seeking passage into the U.S., this is now home, if only temporarily. The Biden administration is still refusing to allow journalists inside, but this video shot by Customs Border Protection last week and obtained exclusively by ABC News shows the human toll on these migrants. The White House has blamed the Trump administration policies for the current conditions, but it's also drawing fierce criticism for undoing many Trump era immigration policies without sufficient planning. Vice President Kamala Harris says she hasn't seen the situation firsthand, but acknowledges keeping kids in places like these is un-American and says the White House is working on a solution. We've got to treat this issue in a way that is reflective of our values as Americans and do it in a way that is fair and it is humane. The Mexican government, meanwhile, says it's stepping up efforts to stop the surge of migrants crossing its southern border with Guatemala, where many of these caravans are coming from. But so far, the human flow shows little signs of slowing down. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. All right, back here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. 72 degrees out there. Justin, no sunshine right now. Are we going to see the sun at all today? I actually, the, that sun, is the, sun. the sun is oh. out. But, really? But yeah, it's just murky is, looking in the distance. It look great. It's some dust. I, oh. I think it's some dust mixing in the air. We had some dust yesterday on West Texas. Some of that's getting transported in our direction. So it's a little hazy outside. Not perfectly blue skies, but yes, it is sunny. Uh, the aquifer jumped up today. This is good news. Up four tenths of a foot to 659.1. And in your pollen count, because we did have rain last night, molds have jumped up into the high category. Hackberry, oak, and mulberry are all in the moderate category. So some big numbers there on the pollen count. We did have a little bit of severe weather last night. We're going to talk about that, talk about rainfall totals, and our next chance of rain coming up. Welcome back. We're going to start off with some video out of Bertram, Texas. This is north and west of Austin, just east of Burnett. Take a look at some of the damage here. Now, the National Weather Service went out and looked at some of this damage uh, just a little bit earlier, a couple of hours ago. They think this is probably a downburst or straight line winds that caused this, not a tornado. Initially, we were thinking tornado, just looking at the damage, uh, but just some strong thunderstorm winds there. Nonetheless, the damage is the same, and they're going to be doing some pickup there in the city of Bertram. Now, that's out of our viewing area. That's up near Austin, but we did have some damage here, too. Uh, Due in large part to some hail. We had some hail around Bernie, which did some damage to some cars. This is around Canyon Lake. Looks like quarter size hail. We had up to golf ball size hail at a few spots. And Canyon Lake also took on a little bit of wind damage, we're hearing too. So we're going to get these reports, put them together. But this is what we're seeing so far. It was a busy night last night. It was a loud night with these storms coming through South Texas. Take a look at some of the storm reports around the area. A 20 plus hail reports. And you can see kind of where they lined up here. Lakey to Bandera, Bernie, Canyon Lake over to north of New Braunfels. And that's where we saw some of the, the, the largest hail. We did see a little bit here in San Antonio, but thankfully it doesn't look like it did a lot of damage. It was smaller here in town, more pea size hail. But again, very loud, very electrical last night, and uh, we did get some rain. I, that's the positive out of all this. We got about four tenths of an inch at the airport, over an inch in comfort. Seguin, about a quarter of an inch. New Braunfels, three tenths of an inch. Canyon Lake, close to an inch. I'd say in general here across Spare County and San Antonio, about a half an inch of rain. We'll certainly take it. We could do without the severe weather. Uh, but the rain has helped the aquifer. It's it's 
jumped up today and you can see where some of the rain heavier rain fell right over the recharge zone. It's up about four tenths of a foot. So as we look at the time lapse, uh, you can see where the rain came through right there about 1:30 to 2 a.m. Very heavy rain coming through the airport didn't last very long. Had some wet roads this morning and then as the sun rose, you can see some of that dust there on the horizon. Still seeing some of that. That was transported in from West Texas yesterday. 66 degrees right now at the airport. Dew point is at 46 north northwesterly winds at about five miles per hour. And there's a picture of the, the latest satellite. We can get a kind of a better idea of the dust and it looks like it's starting to dissipate a little bit. We had a, a, a large amount coming out of West Texas yesterday where they had just some very, very strong winds. So this is a dynamic system that came through Texas. And now we're in the wake of it. It feels pretty good outside. 69 now at the airport. 73 Hello to 70 Port SA, 71 Stinson, 66 Bernie Stage. And the 70s and 80s down to the south. 82 in Cotula. You go north, it is a little bit cooler. 63 Fredericksburg, 68 right now in Rock Springs. We should top out in the 80s today. It'll be warm by the time it's all said and done. Uh, maybe a little bit cooler with some 70s up there around Kerrville and Fredericksburg. Dew point will jump up too. We'll see the dew points get back into the 60s by tomorrow morning. That should lead to some fog, maybe some morning cloud cover, and eventually another chance for rain. You can see the storm system is moving away. Still some very heavy rain across parts of Louisiana near New Orleans, but most of Texas is now looking at clear skies. Here's what the forecast looks like going forward. We'll see the clouds increase tomorrow. A couple of showers possible on your Wednesday, and then we'll see another system moving through. Looks like we should kick up some showers and storms late Wednesday night into early on Thursday. And there is the potential that some of these storms could be on the stronger side, especially across the hill country. Marginal risk there. So we'll keep a close eye on the radar tomorrow night as we're going to go through this again uh, with the potential of some more rain around the area. Forecast for today up around 84 as we mentioned. Westerly winds 5 to 10. Clear skies, but clouds increase tomorrow. 80, 20% chance of some showers, and then a 40% chance of showers and storms Wednesday night into Thursday. 77 on Thursday, 83 Friday, mostly sunny. More clouds by the weekend, and we could get a few more chances of rain by Sunday into Monday. Guys. Right. Well, that's welcomed. Thank you so much, Justin. I'm never doing live cam again. <laughs> this March Madness has seen more upsets than ever before after the break. Washington Post journalist Cindy Boren join us live to talk about all the action. Well, welcome back. We are right in the middle of March Madness, and Madness doesn't even begin to describe some of these upsets we have been seeing. And if you've been watching, you know that there is no perfect bracket left to help break down some of this hoop hysteria. Washington Post reporter Cindy Boren, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, we were just chatting a little bit. So between Oral Roberts, Loyola Chicago, and Ohio, do the number of upsets I've, I've rank? I mean, how do they rank against former tournaments? It seems like there's a lot this year. It does. It feels like there are more of the uh, double-digit seeds uh, than there usually are in the Sweet 16. But this has been such a weird year. You had so many teams uh, whose schedules were interrupted by the coronavirus. Um, you know, for instance, look at Virginia. They went something like 10 days without really even being able to practice. So it, it, it was a mess. Now, uh, everyone knows the Loyola player. Was it Crumpet? <laughs> Crutwig. <laughs> um, so whose player, Crutwig, what yes. player uh, coach Crutwig. stock has risen the most so far? Well, he's got a terrible mustache, so he loses <laughs> points with a mustache. But uh, he had a great game on, on Sunday. He's a, a great player, a, you know, a fun player to watch. And I don't know why anyone would really pick about against Loyola um, and risk the wrath of a lightning bolt from the heavens for picking against Sister Jean's team. <laughs> That's fair. So who do you think uh, the player of the tournament is going to be? Um, oh, I think that's hard to say. Probably. It depends. You know, it depends. It, it's going to be someone from Gonzaga. If they go through and win the whole thing and and are undefeated for the first time since 1976, yeah, it'll probably be a Gonzaga player. But I think that's wide open, too. I, I don't see a, you know, a totally dominant player. All right. So that brings us to our next question. Perfect transition. Who did you have before the tournament and who do you think is going to win now? Well, let's. My bracket, you know, has been torn up in tatters and just exploded and everything <laughs> else for for days now. Uh, I I am going to go with Gonzaga, and because I don't pick two number 
number ones in the final, I'll probably go with Houston. And I know that's, you know, again, don't, don't, no one should wager based on that <laughs> because I'm always wrong. That probably means it'll be Baylor and, oh, I don't know, um, UCLA or Alabama or somebody, but uh, that's, that's where I'm headed right now. All right. You have to throw up the disclaimer, not betting advice. No, no betting advice. Yeah. Right. My advice, don't bet. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. We appreciate it. You bet. Great advice, Cindy. <laughs> Still ahead, we have a new study that shows COVID-19 symptoms could last at least six weeks in your body. A gunman opening fire at a Boulder, Colorado grocery store yesterday, killing at least 10 people, including a police officer. It's the second U.S. mass shooting in less than a week. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has the latest. Guys, we got people down inside King Supers. Holy sh That nightmare unfolding in this Colorado supermarket. Guys, there's an active shooter. Police say 10 people were killed, including the first member of law enforcement to arrive on the scene, Boulder Police Officer Eric Talley. The officer down inside the building. <laughs> Around 2.45 Monday afternoon, a gunman armed with a rifle opening fire in the parking lot of the King Supers grocery store. Well, I can smell the gunpowder, so they were pretty close. Then continuing his deadly rampage inside. It looks like we have an active shooter. Uh, a white male, middle-aged, dark hair, beard, black vest, short lead shirt. Shoppers and employees desperately trying to find safety. We couldn't tell exactly where the shooter was. We knew that he was getting closer to us. We were like sitting ducks. Police surrounding the building and going in through the roof. The entire building is surrounded. You need to surrender. They're taking this man with blood on his leg and hands into custody, rushing him away in an ambulance. This suspect has been identified as Ahmad Alyssa, 21 of Arvada. He has been charged with 10 counts of murder in the first degree and will be shortly transported to Boulder County Jail. Investigators say everyone the gunman shot died. Police doing the heart-wrenching job of notifying families and mourning one of their own. This procession held last night escorting Officer Talley's body from the scene. And Officer Talley was a father of seven. We are just starting to learn about the other victims who range in age from 20 to 65. And police still aren't saying anything about a motive, stressing that it is still early in this investigation. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Boulder, Colorado. Now to the latest in the pandemic, COVID-19 long haulers could experience neurological symptoms that can last at least six weeks. A new study looked at 100 non-hospitalized patients with persistent symptoms across 21 states and many reported neurological symptoms. The most common was brain fog, followed by headache, numbness or tingling, loss of smell or taste, dizziness, pain and blurred vision. 85% of patients reported having four or more of those symptoms, which lasted about six more weeks. A new poll finds most parents fear that their children are falling behind in school while they're at home during the pandemic. This poll from the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy and the Associated Press Nork Center of Public Affairs Research finds 69% of parents are at least somewhat concerned that their children will face setbacks in school because of the pandemic. Meanwhile, 42% say they're extremely worried about it. The poll also found 64% of parents say that they're somewhat worried that the in-person instruction will lead to more people being infected. Well, she was the controversial constable of Bear County Precinct 2, but now Michelle Barrientes Vela is out of office and facing criminal charges. So what exactly happened? Exclusive reporting by KSAT 12's Dylan Collier played a big part, and this Thursday you'll see it all in downfall. It's airing at 9 p.m. for years. He uncovered problem after problem at Precinct 2, something the then constable apparently didn't care for. At this time, I'm done with my questions with you because you have put out a lot of misleading stories, and this is why In we're here way? today because of your affiliation. This is your chance to refute So them. thank you, sir. This is your chance any to refute questions? any reporting that I've done. Does anyone else have any questions? Can we ask you about the 2018 I appreciate your time, conference guys. in Corpus Christi? 
In the end came a Texas Rangers investigation and charges of official oppression and tampering with evidence. See what Barrientes Vela and her attorneys have to say about that and so much more. Case at the uh, case at Defenders special downfall this Thursday, 9 p.m. Look at outside with live cam. Yeah, there's some sun, but there's a lot, a lot of dust. So if you're coughing and wheezing, that might be the reason, as Sarah Spivey likes to say. <laughs> I like it. It's catchy. <laughs> yeah, there is some haze out there for sure. We think it is some dust moving in. There's also uh, quite a bit of pollen in the air now with some oak kicking up. So, yeah, it's not so fun to breathe in the air these days, but it will get better. Uh, we're starting to see some of that dust dissipate. We want to show you another picture coming in on our KSAC Connect. This is out of New Braunfels. Just another example of some of the larger hail last night. We got several reports out of Bernie where there was some damage to some cars and things like that. Uh, some larger hail around Lakey and then also up around the Burnett area. And we are getting some reports of potentially some damage around Canyon Lake, too, uh, with the storms moving through there last night. So it was busy. Uh, not a lot of damage here in San Antonio. It was mostly just rain and some small hail. And right now we're seeing temperatures jump up. We were in the 50s to start, 50s and 40s actually. And now we're up to close to 70 here in San Antonio. 80 Corpus, 80 Brownsville, and then it cools off quite a bit as you get into the Texas Panhandle. 53 Lubbock, 51 right now in the Amarillo. We are on the back side of this storm system. You can see the cloud cover. All the rain is moving east, and we have cleared out for now. There is another storm system headed our way, though, and that will bring some rain chances coming up tomorrow, tomorrow night into Thursday. Forecast for today, lots of sun and a little bit of haze, too. 83 degrees. By 4 o'clock, 81, 6 o'clock, and down to 75 by 8 o'clock. Westerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll talk more about our rain chances coming up and maybe a few thunderstorms, too. That's in just a few minutes, guys. Thanks, Justin. Still ahead, Netflix's new teen musical, One Week Away, comes out later this week. We're going to hear from the stars of the film. And go, Spurs, go. Not exactly the ending we wanted. We're going to explain what happened and what's next. A fateful decision leading to a journey of self-discovery in the new Netflix teen musical, A Week Away. CNN's David Daniel spoke with the stars about the film. And we would be so excited if you would join us this year. Where? You are going to summer camp. You didn't tell me this was church camp. It's going to be great. A Week Away follows a troubled teen who chooses a Christian camp over juvenile detention. What's with the name, A Week Away? A Week Away. Every once in a while, somebody was just a week away from an experience that changed everything for them. The stars say they felt like they were at camp instead of on set. It's kind of hard for it not to feel like camp, oh, just in that environment with the actors and everybody together. We had a great time on, on top of a good film. For me, I mean, it felt really similar. I had nothing to compare it to, but I did feel like I had the full, you know, somewhat of the full experience. Come on, come on, let's go make a memory. Was the singing too much? I couldn't decide. No, no, thing. no, that's what got me. Oh, the singing? Mm -hmm. Nice. Once we got uh, into the flow of things, like, it was like hanging out with your camp friends every day, like going going back to camp. Uh, the whole cast is there, the whole crew, the producers, the dancers. What is my job right now? Like, <laughs> I remember our uh, our producer, Alan Powell, looked at me and goes, you guys have a really weird job. With the fun comes a message as the characters struggle with their identities. If I'm going to fit in here, I have to be something I'm not. It's that genuine frustration when you care for somebody um, and you see so much more for them than they're allowing themselves to see and, and you can't help but step in and say something. We tend to create a projection of ourselves or the way we think we ought to be seen by other people. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's irrelevant because we just want to see who just, the real person is. It's been so long since I felt so connected. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Thoughts? Thoughts? It's, it looks interesting and I want my daughter to watch it. There you go. I'm going to pass. What about you, Justin? Uh, <laughs> probably a pass, too. I don't know. Uh, it's all right. Sure. Let's if talk you, about if it. If you had a teenage kid, you would want them to watch something True. inspirational like pretty that. Wholesome. Uh, 2.93 inches so far this year. We added on about four tenths of an inch uh, last night. So we're still below average. We still need some more rain. There is a little bit more in the forecast. And the almanac for today is so far 69 is the high. We'll be up around average 75 with the records being 96 to 31. Yes, more rain on the way. We'll talk about that forecast coming up. 
Well, welcome back. 1247. Did you hear the craziness overnight with all the storms? I slept all the way through it. Just, I'm just <laughs> impressed. I was so tired yesterday. I think I went to sleep at 8. I woke up this morning and turned on the weather and went, uh oh, that happened. Yep. <laughs> uh, it was about half and half. I kind of pulled the newsroom. Half of people were like, wait, what happened? The other half were like, oh, yeah, I did hear that. It was loud. It was loud. Uh, we had quite a bit of hail in some spots, and unfortunately, there has been some damage being reported, uh, mainly in Bernie, where we had some of the larger hail, and then also around Canyon Lake. Looks like we had some pretty strong winds there. Take a look at this picture. This is uh, one of the examples of the sizable hail, larger than quarters there, likely close to golf ball size in Bernie, and that will do some damage, especially when you get the strong gusty winds with that, and that was the case. Now, we did get rain out of this, too, and that's the, uh, the positive side. Uh, 0.47 in Kerrville, 0.39 at the airport, 0.28 in Seguin. Over an inch in comfort. They were the big winners last night with the rainfall. And then uh, downtown, about seven tenths of an inch. Lotus, about half an inch. On average, about a half an inch here around San Antonio and Bear County. This red line represents the recharge zone of the aquifer. Quite a bit of rain fell in there, too. So this is all going to feed into the aquifer. We'll see those numbers jump up. It's already gone up four tenths of a foot. So that's fantastic news. Outside right now, Starting to see the sky become a little bit bluer. We had quite a bit of haze earlier. It looks like there's still some dust mixed into the atmosphere from yesterday's huge dust storm out west. So that's going to be there for a while longer, but hopefully dissipating throughout the afternoon. 69 degrees right now, calm winds, and they're starting to see those numbers jump into the 70s here around Bear County. 74 in Holotus, 74 Castroville, 71 up there around Bandera, still in the mid 60s in Kerrville and uh, some 80s showing up. We're going to be close to 90 in Catua. It's 82 there right now. 65 Fredericksburg, 63 in Junction. Dew points are low for now. We're going to be on a real roller coaster ride when it comes to these uh, moisture levels. Dew points will jump up quickly tonight and that will allow for cloud cover to come back into play. Also some fog, I think, tomorrow morning. Here's the big picture and you can see where our storm system is really wound up. I mean, it was a dynamic system as it moved across Texas, and that's the reason we got those really strong winds out west and then the severe weather across a large portion of the state, stretching basically along I-35 last night. Those, uh, those storms racing eastward now around the New Orleans and parts of Mississippi and Alabama. As we look at the water vapor, you can see how wound up this thing is moving away. But there's another little system starting to gain some strength behind that. That is what will move in our direction and give us another rain chance. So let's talk about the timing here. Clouds fill back in tomorrow morning. That's 7 o'clock. Couple showers, maybe some fog. And then by, say, 6 p.m., we may get a couple storms to develop. If we get storms to develop during the afternoon, there certainly is a threat that a few of them could become strong to severe. But this model isn't showing much. It's not until the overnight period that we get some more storms developing and uh, moving northeast. And the, the rain chances do pick up Wednesday night into early Thursday. Even during this window, we could have some stronger storms. So we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, everything should move out of here by Thursday morning. And I think by and large, by Thursday afternoon, everything's clearing out. Uh, there is a marginal risk of severe weather coming up tomorrow, mainly in the hill country. Again, this could be altered a little bit, but that's the general idea right now. And we'll certainly have a close eye on the radar. In the meantime, clear skies 84 today, westerly winds 5 to 10. Look for clear skies going into tonight, but those clouds will build in quickly tomorrow. 80 on your Wednesday, 20% chance of some showers, then a 40% chance of rain as we go into Wednesday night, Thursday morning. 77 on Thursday, 83 Friday. More clouds this weekend, and we can't rule out a few showers, maybe a couple storms Sunday into Monday. Guys. Thank you, Justin. All right, after the break, we are talking Spurs highlights from last night's game and what comes next.